If you play Fortnite, this might sound familiar. You decide to play a couple rounds. And before you know it, you're bleary eyed, it's 2am and you're wondering just why you're up so late. And it's not just Fortnite, nearly every gamer can relate, whatever kind of game you play. For people who don't play games, it all seems like a complete waste of time. Or something even more serious. So what's going on in your brain when you play games like Fortnite? Hi there, welcome to So What? the series where we look at stories that you should know about. Hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this, and why not hit the like button if you learned something from watching this one. In this video, we're gonna look at the psychology of computer games, and thanks to evolution, what's going on in our brains when we play them. And there's one game that's caught the imagination more than any other in 2018. So first, let's talk about Fortnite. If you've not been living under a rock, you've probably heard about the gaming juggernaut that is Fortnite. Epic, who make the game, say that 125 million users are now signed up and more than 40 million people are playing the game every month. A huge part of the success is the Battle Royale mode. It's fast-paced, cooperative, tactical gaming genius. Now Fortnite isn't unique by any means, and wasn't the first Battle Royale game out there either. Its base building elements and cartoony style definitely help it stand out from competitors, but it's the gameplay that's kept so many people coming back for more. We had a chat with Ali A at E3 and he told us why he loves the game so much. I would definitely say this is one of the most fun games to play and although it's got an easy entry level, the skill gap and the, skill, the maximum skill level is very, very high. It's a very rewarding game to play as well. So what's going on in your brain when you play a game like Fortnite? There are so many things that make a game successful. The graphics, the story, the characters. Oh, it's you. One thing that's not usually talked about is how our ape-like brain, with the help of millions of years of evolution, react to playing them. And it's really important because if a game gets the psychology and neurology wrong, then players aren't going to play it. We've asked a couple of experts to help explain what's going on with our brains when we play games. First up is Bernie Good. She's a psychologist who's been working with game developers for more than a decade. Basically, it's all about the flow. In the 1970s, a Hungarian psychologist called Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, yeah, I had to Google that, came up with a theory called cognitive flow. And it brilliantly describes how we lose hours to computer games. And not only that, why it might actually be good for us. Flow is something that happens when an individual is completely immersed in the task at hand. And it has really positive psychological benefits for motivation and well-being. Now flow doesn't just apply to computer games. People can get that meditative state from gardening or knitting, loads of other things but video games are really good at hitting the sweet spot where a person is actively engaged in a task, improves over time, is achieving results, and is rewarded. All things that make us reach flow and feel good. It's a balancing act though, and most of us have ditched a game because we got bored, or it made us seriously angry. No! Hitting the sweet spot. It's hard to reach this feeling of flow and maintain it, so how do games like Fortnite achieve it? Well, it's a combination of psychology and brain chemistry. Let's deal with the psychology first. Self-determination theory offers a really good model of how to keep players gaming. Basically, a good game will offer three things. Number one, autonomy. This is the idea that they can make their own choices, that they are the masters of their own destiny. Essentially, it's good for our mental well-being if we feel like we're in control. From strategy, to weapon choice, to appearance, Fortnite offers players tons of opportunities to feel like they're in charge. All right, where we dropping, boys? Next up is relatedness. Human beings need to relate to other people. We are social beings, and it's really important for good psychological health. People thrive on interactions with other people. And in the battle royale mode, you're often put in a team where you're encouraged to cooperate with your teammates. But even if you're playing solo, Fortnite lets you compete against nearly 100 other people and lets you do a stupid dance in front of them when you kill them. Last but not least is competency. As people move through and immerse in video gameplay, they will be achieving various goals throughout that experience. And this will feed into the idea of them mastering something and the idea of individuals feeling competent. When we do things, we like to succeed at them. And even more than that, we like to be told that we're doing well. Computer games are pretty unique because they're constantly rewarding the player with positive feedback. By offering these things in a variety of ways, Fortnite is really good at keeping people online. Monkey brains. Time for our second expert, Professor Paul Howard Jones, who specializes in the effect of computer games on the brain. He's going to tell us how they tap into the chemistry of our grey matter to keep us playing. 
we've evolved a system to guide us in particular situations, motivate us towards doing particular things. And Fortnite is that sort of game which captures those, those scenarios rather well, one after the other. Evolution means that our brains are really good at rewarding us for doing certain things. Computer games are really good at tapping into those reward systems. Paul says that Fortnite does it expertly. Essentially, they seem to have happened upon a series of different ways in which to really get the, the brain's reward system excited. It's all about keeping the player engaged. And the best way to do that is to give them rewards, because when you get a reward, your brain releases the chemical dopamine, which helps keep us focused. And Fortnite is excellent at dishing out rewards. When your opponent loses, that's equivalent to you receiving um, a reward. So you actually experience the same uptake of midbrain dopamine uh, as if you had succeeded in doing something. Kill an opponent, find a chest, survive the circle, level up. All of these things act as a reward and keep that dopamine flowing. The storm circles of Battle Royale are also a big part of keeping the brain focused in Fortnite. Not only does it mean players are always being pushed closer together, raising the tension, it also increases the chance of getting better loot. More loot means escalating rewards means more engaged brain, and it has a knock-on effect, a positive prediction error. This is basically where the brain gets used to small amounts of loot. But if you kill a player in the later stages, and you suddenly hit the jackpot. Well, your brain will be used to the rewards that you had before. But scientists call this a positive prediction error when, when you get it like a happy surprise. And to be suddenly surrounded by targets for carrying more loot, that's a, a, an unexpected thing in terms of your automatic uh, response to rewards. So you're going to get more positive prediction error and you're going to find it much more exciting and engaging as a result of that. Now, it's not controversial to say that people like an element of risk in their lives, of chance, luck even. There's a reason why so many people play the lottery every week. The chests in Fortnite represent that element of chance and offer a classic example of an uncertain reward. So Fortnite, like a lot of video games, constantly giving this, this schedule of uncertain rewards. I mean, if you're in a classroom or if you're at work, you might get a bit of positive feedback on something that you've done. But in a video game like Fortnite, it's, it's absolutely constant. You do something, you get a response. And so it's, it's really engaging your reward system in a way like no other experience would. Then there's the leaderboard and your teammates. Basically, we're a bunch of show-offs. If people are watching us succeed, our brains give us bigger rewards. Just the fact that your, your peer is there, your mate watching what you're doing, that's going to increase the response to the brain's reward system as well. Put all the psychology and brain chemistry together and you've got yourself one very happy gamer. <laughs> but are players being played? So our experts told us that the effect of games on the brain aren't dissimilar to taking certain drugs or gambling. And whilst developers aren't basing all their decisions on brain scans and psychology, it is definitely a growing part of the creative process. Which is understandable really, because developers want to make games that engage their audience. And with something like Fortnite Battle Royale, they need the player to keep coming back time and time again. Maybe because they're so engaging, there are often stories about addiction and health problems linked to video games. Fortnite has faced similar criticisms. But Paul thinks that whilst gaming addiction should be taken seriously, we have to be really careful about blaming the games themselves. It's a helpful thing that it has been defined as a disorder which should receive support. The thing I'm slightly worried about, quite often in cases where you do have obsessive gaming, there are other underlying problems. So I think it's important not to blame the technology all the time. Fortnite is also different from a lot of other popular titles at the moment. For one thing, it's free. And although they were in the game at the beginning, there are no longer randomised loot crates offered. Some other major franchises still offer loot crates, packs, or pay-to-win options. For critics, these systems are the closest gaming comes to encouraging gambling, where the player is asked to risk real money on the chance to gain an advantage over other players. The only thing players can spend money on in Fortnite are superficial stuff like skins, emotes, and dances. They don't change the way the game's actually played, and they're available to all players. But as we've shown, the mechanics and design of Fortnite is incredibly engaging and could lead to adverse effects in some rare cases. Bernie says that if you're worried about how much you or someone you know plays games, there are some simple steps you can take. Put boundaries in place whereby people take the time to spend in the outside world as well as a virtual world. Set time limits, particularly for younger people, and try and understand what it is that the gamer is getting from the gameplay and even play together. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned something about what's going on in your brain when you're playing video games. We certainly did. Thank you to Bernie and Paul for giving us their time and making a really complex subject quite easy to understand. We want to know what you think about Fortnite. Can you stop yourself from playing it? And what about gaming addiction in general? 
Is it something we really should worry about? Maybe we should make a video on it. Let us know in the comments below.